going to talk a little bit about transformation, being transformed. The word transform, it means to change completely the appearance or character of something or someone. To change a thing into a different thing. Transform implies a major form, a major change in form, nature, or function. Church, I want to say we are transformed as when we behold God. Can somebody say amen? We are changed when we see God. We are not changed. We, we are not changed by the law of God. We are changed in the presence of God. Amen. This is very important. You know, you can come to church. You can hear so much, so much word. And you can still be unchanged on the inside. I don't know about you. I don't want to be unchanged. I want to be different. I, I want to be changed from the inside out. Amen. Let me tell you, when you're changed on the inside, it's going to be so much pleasant for you to live inside of you. Come on. That's why I pray God change me. Because when he does a deep work within my heart, it's so, it's so much better to live in me. Amen. So if you have your Bible, I want you to open up to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6, and we're going to read. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his rope filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Now those are angels. They're actually called the burning ones. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke so I said woe is me for I am undone because I'm, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then one of the seraphim flew to me having in his hand a live coal which he had taken from the with the tongues from the altar and he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying to me, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Isaiah sees God. Isaiah sees a vision of God. Let me tell you, church, Isaiah has already been two years in the ministry. This is Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah already served chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5. He's, he's already a man of God. God is already using him to see visions. God is already using him to prophesy. God is already using him to bring impact in that generation. But chapter 6, Isaiah sees God. And he says, woe is me, for I am undone. Church, the word woe is often used to express grief, regret, misfortune, or grievous distress stated from such a great affliction of some sort or being in such trouble that an escape out of it seems impossible sometimes a woe is beyond description and words fail us so a woe may be the only thing we can say to express our feelings very much like when we groan now as i mentioned earlier this is chapter six in chapter one through five isaiah eight times says woe to other people isaiah eight times judges other people isaiah eight times sees other people and isaiah 20 isaiah 2 9 says woe to them woe to the wicked disasters is upon them they will be paid back for what their hands and done woe to you who add house to house woe to those who rise early in the morning to run after their drinks who are 
who stay up late at night and are inflamed with wine. Woe to the to those who draw sin with cords of deceit. Woe to the to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Woe to the to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in, in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and champions from mixing drinks. Isaiah sees other people but for the first time in his life he says woe is me woe is me you know it's so easy to see other people's sins and faults and mistakes so easy but your own sin, your own faults, and your own shortcomings. The Bible says, Psalms 36, 9 says, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. I'm going to say that again. In your light we see light. You need God's light to shine upon you in order for you to see It's in the presence of God that our true condition is revealed. Don't get me wrong. God will judge the unrighteous in this world. But first, God will deal with his own. 1 Peter 4, 17 says, For the time has come for judgment, decision. Now, when you hear the word judgment, it's also another word for a decision to begin at the house of God. God will make a decision to purify his people first before revival will happen in the world. God will first purify me before he will deal with you. Before God sent Isaiah to preach, prophesy, and impact the world, God must do a deeper work in Isaiah. Before he released him to, to prophesy in the rest of the 66 books of the Bible, God gives him a vision. He shows himself to him how great and awesome he is. And Isaiah cries out, woe is me. I want to ask us some questions how are we seeing ourselves do we have a correct evaluation of ourselves have you have your eyes see saw seen the king you know you might have heard about him but have you personally behold him like Isaiah did Job 42 5 says my ears have heard of you but now my eyes have seen of you and I repent in dust and ashes church we need to have a fresh encounter with the king we need to go up the mountain of the Lord to be changed to be transformed Moses on top of the mountain he was changed his face shined when he came back his face was glowing the children of Israel they were on the bottom the bottom of the mountain they played church they were religious now listen to me carefully Moses on top of the mountain is changed from the inside out he receives the law of God he comes down to the of the he comes down to the people he gives him the law of God but because the people didn't behold God they were not changed from the inside out the law that Moses gave the children of Israel they could not keep it you will not keep God's law if you're not changed on the inside if we are not transformed we won't keep God's law without God's spirit you and I we will become religious we will know what the right words to say how to put on and act correctly in the church but on inside of us we will be the same you'll be religious let me tell you 
You can know what the right things to say when you come to church. When to lift up your hands. When to say hallelujah. When to say thank you Jesus. But is your inside the same? Or is, is it transformed? Romans 2, 28, 29 says, For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart by the spirit not by the letter and his praise is not from men but from God it is only by God's spirit it is only God's spirit that can cut away make us undone cut to the heart things in our heart that doesn't belong it's a work of God's grace you can't be holy without the Holy Spirit When Peter spoke words, the Bible says the word of God cut people to their heart. And they said, what should we do? Peter's like, you need a change. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongues of, of, of the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Then I heard a voice saying to me, who will, I, who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. When God purify us. We will hear and we will see so much clearly. The voice of God will become clear, sharp. Deception will be broken. Our heart will become tender, soft, moldable, teachable, guidable. And then God will be able to use us for his glory. Now, go back. Go back to the beginning when Isaiah had that vision. I want you to go back to it in your Bible. How does that vision start? Come on. I'm, I want to have a dialogue with you guys. How does that vision start? Can somebody read it out loud? That's right. It starts with this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. So it, it doesn't start with Isaiah just having the vision. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died. You might ask me, what does King Uzziah have anything to do with Isaiah having a vision? It has everything to do. Everything. King Uzziah had to die before Isaiah could see a fresh vision of God. I want to take you in the Bible to 2 Chronicles verse chapter 26 verse 3. Now pay attention very very carefully. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became a king. Imagine that. He was 16 years old. You know Maybe you and maybe I, we've come to the Lord at a young age. I started following God when I was around 16, 17, 18, 19. And he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jechohiah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Just as his father Amaziah done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah. Uzziah, in the beginning, he had mentors. He had people to show him the way. Who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he sought the Lord, inquired, yearned for, God gave him success. He went to war against the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jabin, and Ashdod. Come on, does that sound like some addictions were broken? He then rebuilt towns near Ashdod and everywhere among the Philistines. He rebuilt some towns. Doesn't that sound like a little bit like soul healing that happened in it? God helped him. 
against the Philistines, against the Arabs who lived in Jerbal, and against the Mennonites, the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. God helped him with his relationships. And his fame spread as far as the border of Egypt because he, he became very powerful. Some translation says strong. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the angle wall. And he fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness. Let me tell you, God helped him with his identity. There were some things that were built. And dug many cisterns because he had much livestock in the foothills and in the plains. He had people working in his fields, vineyards, in the hills and in the fertile lands. For he loved the soil. God helped him with his business. Uzziah had a well-trained army ready to go out and by divisions according to their numbers as mustered by Jael, the secretary, the officer under the direction of Hananiah one of the royal officials the total number of family leaders over the fighting men was 2,600 Uzziah had 2,600 leaders under their command he had an army of 3,000 set 300,000 7,500 trained trained for war Uzziah had a big church a powerful force to support the king against the enemies. Uzziah provided shields, spears, helmets, coats of armor, bows, sling stones for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made devices invented. God gave him wisdom to use on the, for use on the towers, on the corners, defenses, so that the soldiers could not shoot air, so the soldiers could shoot arrows and hurl large stones from the walls. So let me tell you, his ministry was flourishing. His fame spread far and wide for he was greatly, marvelously helped until he became powerful, until he became strong. But after Uzziah became strong, powerful, his pride led him to his downfall. Church, there's nothing wrong in becoming strong and becoming powerful. It's just we need to not forget where it all came from. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah the priest with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord followed in. They confronted King Uzziah and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. For that is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful. Let me tell you guys, pride leads. Pride will lead us to do things we shouldn't do. We will be unfaithful. You can, be, you can fall into immorality. You can fall into perversion. But the root of it, the root of it is not immorality, is not perversion. The root of it is pride. You will not be honored by the Lord. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. A religious spirit and pride goes hand in hand. Let me tell you guys, Uzziah was in the temple worshiping Uzziah was not smoking the joint Uzziah was not committing fornication Uzziah was in the temple worshiping the Lord Uzziah who had a censer in his hand ready to burn incense became angry while he was raging at the priest, where there is rage, there's pride hiding. In the presence before, in the presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temp temple, leprosy broke out on his forehead, and Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him. They saw he had leprosy on his forehead, so they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave because the Lord afflicted him. 
King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous and banned from the temple of the Lord. Church, the same God that marvelously helped Uzziah. You know, there was a time in Uzziah's life when he was on fire for God. As long as Uzziah sought the Lord, he prospered. But the same God that marvelously helped Uzziah was the, was the same God that resisted him. Church, it wasn't the devil that afflicted leprosy upon him. Well, it could have been the devil using, I'm not going to go into that theology. But I'm, but I'm going to say this. The same God that helped him in the beginning of his, when he was 16 years old, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and so on. Marvelously helped him. Business, career, relationship, ministry, all of it was the same God that resisted him. 1 Peter 5, 5, 6 says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You do not want to be resisted by God. Trust me, God got some guns. You do not want to be resisted by God. See, we think that we think that God got our back all the time and He's for us. He is for us. He's for us when we're when we're with Him. Church, Uzziah was around 58 years old. When that happened, 58 years old, this was not a mistake that that he made in his youth. This is not like a teenager mistake. Oh, Lord Jesus, Uh, oopsie, oopsies. He was 58 years old. He was already mature, already seasoned. Deuteronomy 8.10 says this. When you have eaten and you are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Otherwise, when you have eat, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine large houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and your gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. God was telling the children of Israel way ahead of time, even before they went into the promised land. He's saying, look, before you even go into your blessings, everything that I'm going to give you, don't forget who is giving you that blessing in the first place. The prideful, they lose sight of who it was that helped them. The prideful, they don't think they need to change. Do you remember when I said a religious spirit will, will, goes hand in hand with pride? You know, you can come to church, hallelujah, praise you, praise you. And, and it will cover up the pride in your heart because you'll be thinking you're fine, you're good. That's what Isaiah thought, U- Uzziah thought. He thought, I'm good. I'm here burning incense for the Lord. The prideful, they don't experience God's presence. And because they don't experience God's presence, they remain unchanged. We need to be changed on the inside. That's why it's so important to be changed on the inside. One comment, commentary describes pride's DNA this way. He writes, The essence of pride arises in our hearts when we shift confidence from God to self. This basic attitude of pride is manifested in, in, insolent, in insolence, scoffing, presumptuousness, stubbornness, willfulness, and hardness of heart. And he continues, As a result, a person does not seek God. He becomes quarrelsome, and his and her life ends in loneliness and isolation. Let me tell you, Uzziah died 
isolated from everybody else. When you see yourself isolating from others, there's probably something inside of it. Church, God was dealing with me with this. I saw so much junk inside my heart. I said, God, I don't want it. I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. I want to behold your glory. I want to go up the mountain. I don't want to be like the children of Israel on the bottom. They, they play church, hallelujah. But the, the God's spirit was not moving them. They were religious. They sang songs. But they weren't changed on the inside. Guys, a relationship with God is not a religion. It's life. It's life. I want to ask us some questions. I want everybody to close your eyes. Now close your eyes. Don't focus on, don't focus on the left, on the right. We've come to, the, we come to church to hear a word from the Lord. Now remember, remember how the first time you humbled yourself when you came to God. Do you remember how His Holy Spirit wrapped you, wrapped you in your arms when you were broken, busted, and disgusted? How the grace of God was given to you. How God helped you with your everyday life, with your identity with your relationships, with your business, with your career. Do you remember that time where, where, you, where you were so broken and you cried out to God with all your heart? Just as Uzziah did at 16 years old. He says, God, I need you. And God's spirit and his presence came. And, and it met you. Church, I remember the time when I cried out. I remember the time when his presence came upon me. When I felt him, experienced his love. What happened? Ask yourself that question. What happened? What happened? Did your business grow? You married a beautiful wife? God gave you a good job? You're flourishing maybe in ministry? God is blessing you with finances? Are you still in the same place where you were that one time when you cried out? God wants to encounter you today. We don't come to church just to sit down on the pews. We've come to church to encounter God. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to repeat after me. Repeat after me. Say, Uzziah needs to die. Come on, one more time. Say, Uzziah needs to die in me. Before Isaiah will get a fresh vision, a fresh revelation, before Isaiah will be transformed, Uzziah needs to die. Colossians 3, 5 says, put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. The Bible calls us to crucify the flesh. Pride comes from the flesh. Church, we are not going on this fast because we're being religious. We're going on this fast for some things to die. And when those things die, we will see God in His glory and we will be filled with His Spirit and we will impact this generation. Uzziah needs to die. Put pride to death. Pride will hinder you to receive the grace of God. Now the word grace means the ability God gives to a person to do what truth demands. Grace is not just a cover up for your sins. Oh Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me. And tomorrow, I'm going to do what I want to do. 
No, grace is power to do what God says to do. Pride will have a form of, of religion, but it will not have God's spirit backing it up. We will play church and we will not see our true conditions. The inside of us will not change. That's why in the book of Revelations, Jesus says to the last church, I counsel you to buy eyes self, meaning ointment on your eyes, that you can anoint your eyes, that you could see your true condition. Because that church said, I have everything. I am rich. I am wealthy. I don't really need to think. God, I probably don't even need you. But God, Jesus says, you are poor, blind, pitiful, and naked. We need the inside of us to change. And only humility will give us the ability to access the grace of God. To see the king in his glory. To be changed. To be transformed. The Bible says he resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. When Uzziah humbled himself in that 16 years old. God gave him grace. Church, God is a good father. He doesn't want to like wipe us out. No. He has no intentions. He didn't, he didn't have no intentions to create us and to just to wipe us out. But there's principles in the word of God that we must abide and we cannot cross. In order to walk with God, you got to come in agreement on his terms. Not how, what you want to do. Amen. Psalms 51, 16, 17. And if we can have the worship team come up. Psalms 51, 16, 17, David says, you do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasures in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, you will not despise. This is when David, almost similar like Uzziah, Uzziah went into the temple he did a bad, bad, bad thing. David committed adultery with Bathsheba. David tried to cover it up. David killed Uzziah. David killed one Uriah. That's right, Uriah. David killed him to cover it up. David committed adultery. He committed murder. He lied. Both of them did bad. Uzziah did bad and David did bad. But you know what David's heart was? He says... You do not, God, you do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. David says, God, if, if you want to sacrifice, do you know how much gold I have? Do you know how much silver I can have? I can give you all the gold and all the silver. But, it, but he says, you don't delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart you God will not despise now the word broken it comes from a Hebrew meaning to break to break in pieces contrite means to crush and the heart means inner man mind and will a contrite heart or spirit is when a person's inner man or will has been broken so they they no longer run after the things they want, but they are surrendered to the things that, God's want, that God wants. A broken heart says, I will no longer do it this way on my terms, but I will surrender to your ways. This type of heart that is fully surrendered to God, he will never turn away. A broken spirit or, and contrite heart means that when we come humbly before God, acknowledging our sin and proclaiming God's goodness, this form of humble spirit expresses our need for God and His salvation alone. It does not blame God or others for our sins, but takes full responsibility for the actions we took. When David messed up, he didn't say, oh, she was over there naked and I had no choice but to look he says no God it was me 
Against you and you alone I sin. Nobody else. As we humble ourselves before God, we recognize and become dependent upon His mercy. This both kills the pride that God opposes within us and maximizes the mercy of God as the one who deserves all the glory. Church, we've come here to encounter the Lord. We need a fresh vision. We cannot stay religious. We need to have substance on the inside of us. This world is dying. There's people. They are going to hell. But God needs to do a deeper work within us before he will do a deeper work in them. He is looking for somebody that will say, yes, Lord, me, I will go. But we cannot hear it because there's things inside of us that still needs to shift. You know, the interesting thing when Isaiah had that vision and when he, he says, yes, I will go. Then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and tell this people. This is God saying, go tell this people. Keep on hearing, but not understanding. Keep on seeing, but not perceiving. Think about that. God tells Isaiah after he, this vision, he says, go to my people. Tell him, you're going to be seeing, but you're not going to understand it. You're going to be hearing, but you're not going to understand it. Why? because you're religious you're not beholding my glory you're not being changed on the inside out you're coming to church you're hearing the word but you're not changed you're not changed you're not changed and listen listen on what God is saying he says make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and they hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and return and be healed. God is saying, because they're religious, they don't care about seeing my glory. Shut their eyes. Or else they will turn to me and I will heal them. <laughs> it, looks like it's, it looks like it's a bad God, but God is not bad. God is so good. He wants to shake us up from this religion so that we can behold his glory so we can be changed on the inside and God will heal us God's desire is to heal this land 